Hi, Year 12 Maths General students. This lesson is from Unit 3 uh, of General Maths, um, and we're constructing a scatter plot using Excel to display associations between two numerical bivariate variables. Uh, so the lesson objectives today, uh, given a set of um, numerical variable data, we're going to just quickly review how to classify in order to identify the explanatory and response variables, and then construct the scatter plot to help identify patterns um, suggesting the presence of an association using Excel. So we know that the aim of analysing any data is to look out for any patterns or links um, between variables that we're analysing. So we're looking for an association, which is like a correlation or relationship between the two numerical variables of the data sets that we're looking at. So remember these variables can be classified as either categorical, so remember that's name data, um, which can either be ordinal, so it has some sort of order to it, like a star rating, uh, one to five stars, or the other type is nominal, uh, there's no order, uh, you could be surveying things like favourite colours, uh, the brands of something. And the other type of data is numerical. So that's number data that's either discrete, uh, where we can count it in whole number counts. So for example, if I was counting, uh, counting pencils in a pencil case, uh, or the other type is continuous, where I'm measuring data to collect it uh, on a continuous scale. So if I was measuring the heights of people, um, they're the types of data that we're used to classifying. Um, we came across some new terminology uh, to look at variables that have an effect on other variables. So we saw them as explanatory variables, uh, which is not otherwise known as the independent variable, which we associate with explaining or having an effect on the value of the response variable. And the other one is the response variable, which is otherwise known as the dependent variable, um, which is the variable that's affected or changed by the values of the explanatory variable. So to investigate the association between two variables that we might be analysing in a, some sort of survey or study, we must firstly identify which of the variables is the explanatory and which is the response. Uh, and usually ask yourself the question, does the response variable depend on the explanatory variable? So for example, I might say, uh, do test scores depend on time spent during studying? So test scores would be your response variable, time studying would be your explanatory variable. So the way a statistical survey question is asked is a really important factor in deciding which one's which. When we're completing some sort of data analysis between two sets of numerical data, uh, we usually summarise that in a table of results and then display it as a scatter plot. Um, which is a really good vi visual way of interpreting and identifying any patterns or relationships between the variables. And from there, we'll then go through how to complete some calculations to get some nice statistics to support your observations. So a great way to visualise um, whether there's an apparent association between your variables is to construct a scatter plot um, with numerical data. To do that, we need to know which variable do I put on which axis. The response variable goes onto the y-axis and the explanatory variable goes onto the x-axis. Now we could go ahead and plot um, variables using um, graph paper and doing it by hand, but a much more effective way of constructing a scatter plot is using Excel. So I'm going to show you how to do that um, with some examples. Um, but essentially, uh, once you've got the data you want, we're going to enter it into two columns to create a results table. Then we're going to highlight it, insert a scatter chart, 
and then we're going to tidy it up by, by adding some access labels, a title. Um, if we need to, we're going to adjust the scales of the axes. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to add a trend line um, and something that we call the R squared value. And then we'll look at um, what those things mean a little bit later. So we're going to do an example. Um, first one we're looking at is 20 people were sampled on their arm length and height in an investigation to see if there was a predictable correlation between someone's arm length and their height. And given the data in a table um, that's been put together, uh, we're going to open up this Excel spreadsheet and before we get stuck into that, it's super important that we identify which one's the explanatory and which one's the response. And we look very carefully at the wording of the question. So it wants to know if there's a predictable correlation between someone's arm length and their height. Because of the wording of the question, if we're given someone's arm length, can we predict their height is how you would probably fluff that out to word it. So that implies that our arm length is our explanatory variable and our height is our response variable. Let's move on to uh, taking it over to Excel and creating a scatter plot. So when we open this up in Excel, um, it's super important that somewhere you acknowledge which one's your explanatory and which one's your response. So you're super clear to yourself um, which one's which. If you put your data in a vertical table of results, Excel would recognize the left-hand column as your X value and your right-hand column as your Y value. Um, so if we want to create a scatter plot for that, we want to select all the data in those two columns. Okay, so you can use shift click to do that. Um, we then go to insert. We want scatter and this one. Okay, and you can see that um, we have uh, the beginnings of a scatter plot. Um, very unpolished, so we need to add things like um, a relevant title some axes, labels. Uh, we need to fix up this scale because it's very clustered and small. Um, and so we'll go through that process now. So to change the title, uh, if you just select it and um, click inside, you can just um, alter whatever's there and put in what you think is a better title. And if you're not happy with what um, where it puts the title, you can always shift it. Um, so if you select the box, you can just drag it to wherever you want it. I want to put in some axes labels. So we'll go up to chart design, add chart element, axes titles. So because on my X, that was my arm span. And you can click on the box and bold it if you want. Uh, add in my y-axis, which was my height. Make it bold. Um, the other thing I'm not happy with is the scaling. So to change the scaling, you need to just left click on any one of the numbers of the axes. So I'm going to do the x-axis first. Um, and then if you right click and go to Format Axis. And just to the side here, it'll ask you for the minimum and maximum. So if I look there, probably around the 150 mark is where I want to start it. And you can always adjust as you go along. Uh, so if I just shove that over from there, I can just click on the Y axis and it will um, get me to change that one. So let's try a minimum of 150. And that looks like a good a good spread of my um, data. You can close that. 
The last thing I want to do is um, just pop in a trend line. So if you right click on any one of these points, add trend line, uh, we want linear. And if we scroll down uh, the bottom, I have to move this up. Uh, what you can see here is display equation on chart and displayed R squared values. And although we're not going to talk about how they're used at the moment, um, we want them displayed on our scatter plots. Uh, you can move the box around. I'm going to bold it as well. And that's ready to use for any analysis that we might do later. Okay, let's do another example. Uh, but I'd like you guys to do this one yourselves. Uh, so this one's looking at a study where we're looking at a possible correlation between time it takes for a headache to go away when different doses of pain medication was given to a group of 12 patients. Uh, you've been given the data, uh, looks like in a very raw form. So you're going to have to put together a lovely results table. Then you'll have to identify what your explanatory and response variables are in order to come up with your scatter plot. So press pause, give it a go, and we'll check in with um, yours compared to mine. Okay, so um, this is my results table in Excel. Um, dose is going to be my explanatory variable. Time is going to be my response variable. I want to insert a scatter plot. So I'm going to select the two columns, insert, scatter. There's my raw one. I'm going to change the title just to something appropriate. I'm going to go put in some axes labels. The scale looks pretty good, so I don't think I need to alter that. Um, and pop in my trend line. The linear. Okay, and it's ready to copy over. Okay, um, and there we have it. So the take home messages from this lesson are make sure you're on top of how to classify your variables. Firstly, as um, your categorical or numerical. And then from there, when we're looking at uh, numerical bivariate data, can you identify which variable is your explanatory and which is your response? Remembering that the response depends on the explanatory variable. Uh, from there, can you construct a scatter plot um, using Excel and do all those fiddly things like adding on a title, axis labels, fixing up your scale, adding on a trend line and your R squared values? Thanks, Year 12s.